Hello, I'm Yim, a hobby 3D artist. After years of fiddling in 3D software, I have finally gotten my first ever 3D printer to print my art. And here's how it went. Not gonna lie, I'm a little bit nervous about printing my art. They are, for the lack of a better word, a fucking nightmare to print. I'm a generative artist. I'm into generating things in nature, like trees or plants or flowers. Which means my models are full of irregular floating shapes. Or dangly little parts. I mean, look at these cute little leaves. I'm quite proud of them, but hey, let's just casually fit this heavy-duty geometry with 3 million polygons to the printer, right? What can possibly go wrong? <laughs> Meet Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, my first ever 3D printer. It has very little idea what fate awaits it. Uh -oh. The assembly process was really easy. The hardest part was probably carrying the machine out of the box. Otherwise, I just had to remove a few screws, put the material console on top of the printer, connect the screen and cables, and turn it on. For my first ever print job, I printed this um, bass scraper model that came with the printer. It took less than 20 minutes to complete. And look at how hard I was attaching the finished print with a palette knife. This girl clearly had no idea that the print bed was detachable. I mean, I know this is a very simple model to print, but look at how clean and gorgeous this small thing turns out to be. Thank you, technology. As for which of my own models to print, the overachiever in me thought that it was a good idea to go from a simple bass scraper straight to um, a mess like this. Well, this is a planter model that I generated in Houdini. The idea of the design is to wrap a plum tree branch around the body of a pot. Why a plum tree branch, you might ask? A flowering plum tree is actually a very, very popular motif in Asian art. You can find them in paintings, sculptures, museum pieces. You can find them on pots and plates. Literally, they're everywhere. I have always fantasized about becoming a modern-day craftsman, someone who recreates these masterpieces in museums, but with their own spin. So I guess this is my somewhat pathetic attempt. A very quick walkthrough of how I generated the planter. The main tree branch is generated from a couple of hand-drawn curves. Then I swept the circle across the of that and, and some noises to, to displace this yada yada yada. Okay, let's be real. I know most of you don't have the attention span for this stuff, so just leave me a comment if you want to hear more about the details, okay? And because I'm a real plant parent, I did not forget to leave a drainage hole in the bottom. Alright, now it's time to import the model into the Slicer, a software that analyzes your model layer by layer and generates printing path. I scaled down the model to one-fourth of its original size to save some time and material for the inevitable disaster that is the very first test print. I then let the Slicer generate supports so that regions floating in the air have a foundation to be printed on. This supports look very interesting, almost beautiful, right? Well, good old me is so blissfully ignorant, I have very little idea how much of a pain the ass they would be to remove later. So, I let the printer went to work. The printing's process was actually quite mesmerizing to look at, but I was too nervous to watch. As if the more I peeked at it, the more it was doomed to fail. Two hours later, the print came out like this. I can't believe it kinda worked. And it's actually quite beautiful. <laughs> I spent the next 30 minutes picking, picking, and picking off the supports. They were breaking into little tiny pieces. Some were refusing to go without a fight. Others were refusing to go without also taking a small piece of the original print with it. And an eternity later, <laughs> The supports were finally fully removed. As a first test print, I was extremely satisfied with the quality of the print. I was really happy to discover that the extruding parts that were kind of half hanging in the air stayed on really well, and the PLA material felt sturdy. 
This is great because previously I was the most worried about these tiny little details messing up the print, but the printer handled it like a boss. Oh yeah. The real challenge, as I discovered, was the overhands. Overhands are the undersides of your slopes, where each layer sticks out more than a certain angle from the previous layer. All of the supports are generated for supporting these areas, so that they don't hang in the mid-air, and gravity won't pull them down. For our tiny test print over here, I decided to stay on the safer side and generated a ton of supports. It kind of worked out well, but the supports were just really really hard to remove. So next, I went back to Houdini and modified my model. Previously, I had all my flowers pointing 90 degrees away from the pop body. Now, I rotate them to point 45 degrees up, and hopefully that reduces overhands. For the next test print, I printed the Justin model at one half of its original size. This time, I configured the slicer to only support the critical areas. Do I know what critical areas mean? No. Was I sure it was gonna work? Of course not! <laughs> but hey, that definitely looks like fewer supports to me, so let's try it out! Luckily, it worked out well. There were way fewer supports to remove, and they were easy to break off. The print overall still remained high quality. With the half-size printing working, now I'm ready to print a full-size model. This big boy took about 6.5 hours to complete, and without any surprise, the printer killed it again. Now that I can see everything in its full size and their full glory, I notice a problem, which is the flowers are looking too big, too chunky, even a little goofy. The printer has proved that it has no problem handling small details. I wanted to adjust my design to show off the delicacy of my flowers more, because, you know, after all, that is my aesthetic. So, I went back to Houdini, and regenerated the version with smaller flowers and more variations. For example, this half-blossoming flower bud, or these buds that are just beginning to form. I also made some final tweaks to the pot body, and sent the model to print for one last time. And let's take a look at the final result! Overall, I think this experiment was a success. I went into it thinking everything was gonna be doomed because of how complicated my models were. I thought the printer was really gonna struggle with the small details, and the nozzle was gonna all get jammed up, and I would get a pile of spaghetti art in the end. <laughs> but there's nothing that cannot be fixed with a little bit of support. The printer can pretty much faithfully translate whatever you see on screen to the reality. I mean, if you compare this guy with the actual 3D model, it's a very faithful print, unless you really scrutinize the small details, like the layer lines. Alright, here's three tips for my fellow 3D printing beginners. First of all, as counterintuitive as it may sound, life is a lot easier without supports. Try adjusting your model or the orientation of your model to reduce overhands. Secondly, even though PLA has turned out to be a surprisingly sturdy material, do not test its limit by putting supports around fragile structures. You will never be able to break them off without also taking the original structure with it. <laughs> 3. Please, please, please print a bed scraper and use that to scrape off the little residuals on your print bed. This way you can avoid getting your fingernails pierced by a random piece of plastic. Don't ask how I found out. Alright, that's it for this video. Now that I'm officially going down this 3D printing rabbit hole, I'm probably gonna make more videos about my wings and failures, probably mostly failures, making 3D prints. If you're interested in seeing more content like this, please leave a comment down below. Alright, thank you for watching, I will see you in the next video, and in the meantime, don't forget to save!